Do you know um, about Event 201? I heard Robert F. Kennedy Jr. talking about it, describing how the CIA was there, like the big tech companies were there, and like they had like a bunch of the plans that got more totalitarian. Well, well why do they do that in public? It's <laughs> <laughs> an excellent question. So there, I think there could be num a number of different reasons. For people who don't know, please do look it up. Event 201, which was held in October of 2019, just at the time that whatever they say was starting to spread in Wuhan was presumably starting to spread before it started to get noticed or whatever, whatever timeline they're trying to throw out. Anyway, at that exact time, they're having an event, uh, uh, this biosecurity preparation event that was co-hosted by the Johns Hopkins Center for public security or whatever fancy name they give themselves and uh, involved a fictional scenario of a novel coronavirus spreading uh, pandemic spreading around the world and how they would deal with that. So they had this tabletop exercise and they go through it. And I think it's still, I, the last time I checked, it was online for you to view that exercise. And there, there was six hours of it that I did watch at the time. Um, it's interesting in retrospect, isn't it? Once you know that, oh, they're preparing for something that presumably they're, they're ginning into existence here. Um, why would they do that is an excellent question. And I think, again, there's a few different reasons. One, I think, is simply to prepare the public consciousness to accept the reality of the events that they are then being presented with. If you are drilled and presented with this idea, okay, this is the emergency we're preparing for, we're preparing for this, we're preparing for this, we're preparing for this, then when it happens, it doesn't feel so out of left field. You're, you're not like, oh my God, what is this? You're like, oh yes, well, we were expecting this. So I, I, again, it's a nice way to prepare people, but perhaps more specifically, uh, because most of people in the general public in October, 2019 weren't exactly, didn't know of the existence of Event 201 and weren't following it. I mean, it was live streamed, I believe, but probably had about three people watching it because who, who would watch that? But the people participating in those events are probably the primary uh, uh, targets of that propaganda. Um, the head of the CDC and people like that, um, the head of the Chinese CDC was there, um, who are the public officials who absolutely will have power and, and responsibilities and key roles in when this event actually becomes reality whatever that means exactly in this case, um, when that actually starts to happen, these people will already, in a sense, be trained in what to do and how to do it. And also what threats to look out for, because one of the things that came up in that tabletop exercise was, uh-oh, people are spreading misinformation about, uh, uh, about this novel coronavirus pandemic. So how do we deal with that? And and some countries are going to shut down the internet entirely to start to stop the spread. And, oh, maybe we don't want to go that far, but how should we censor and can we censor? Th those sorts of conversations get raised and broached in this safe fictional environment that then becomes reality several months later. And those officials who are now in positions to actually do these things have already, again, been mentally prepared for the, uh, the events as they start to take place. If you like that clip, please find the full link to the interview below. Also do not forget to subscribe to this channel to keep up with discussions of God, morality, and human freedom.